Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are continuing looking at the armor. And again, this is the picture that Paul was accustomed to seeing as these soldiers were all around them at the time because uh, they were at the time and the Roman Empire was active and alive and um, uh, ruling much of the world at the time. But uh, we, we looked yesterday at uh, the truth, took you guys and show you that that's the foundation by which we fight. Uh, the Bible tells us, um, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's in John 8, uh, 31 through 2. And uh, we saw an example uh, where Jesus is utilizing the truth to overcome the enemy. The Bible says in John 14, 16, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth, you know, and the life. He's the way, he says. So he's pointing the way which you and I are to uh, fight against the enemy. His life is all about that. So I'm casting out demons and all these type things, showing his authority. So let's take a look now at the next um, weapon that we have available according to the scripture document in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. This is the other weapon that we have. We looked at truth and it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And so you have to take a look at, uh, imagine Paul watching at these guys and they have breastplate that is there to protect the body and to protect it from any type of weaponry that the enemy is using. And so it is the same for you and I. What is righteousness? And uh, as we gain that, become righteous upon salvation. Uh, once you become born again, uh, the scripture tells us that. And um, uh, once you become born again, you become righteous. And uh, um, it says if we confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord and uh, believe in our heart, I shall be saved. Or in other words, it tells us that we become righteous, this righteousness of God. So um, they, Western Christianity, we say it is right standing with God. So where, when, how does one become in right standing with God? And when you, and I say righteousness, you and I are thinking of, you know, doing, living right, not doing this, not doing that, not doing this, but that's not what it is. The Bible tells us, and Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him as righteousness. And we saw that in Romans 4, chapter, uh, 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 verses 3, chapter 4, verse 3. And it tells us that, uh, you know, that uh, we are, uh, um, once you believe the word of God, that it is at that point, it is credited to you as righteousness. Now, let's say you're in the church and you're hearing the preacher preach the word of God and um, uh, the entrance of the word comes, revelation, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift. And I, you guys have heard me talk about the process by which we become born again. So this is what happens to you uh, according to the word in verse uh, John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So unrighteousness then has to do with sin. And once you and I believe God and we are the just shall live by faith, if we are walking by faith and living by faith, then we are righteous. And so, um, because it says we believe God and it was accredited to him as righteousness. So once we make that confession and we walk by faith, we are maintaining our good standing or our right standing with God. And so as you and I walk by faith, just shall live by faith, we are righteous. Um, and as we are righteous and living righteously, which is by faith, what happens to us is that you and I begin to exhibit some of the qualities, the product of um, being right. We become, we start walking in the holiness. The holiness, we're walking in the spirit. We are walking in a different way than how the world is seeing us and, uh, and that we see ourselves. So it's very important. There's nothing that you can do to make yourself righteous except to believe God. That's it. it tells us that how Abraham, Romans 4, 3. For, with, for what did the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited him for righteousness. And the Bible tells us that you and I are righteous. 
it tells us in Corinthians five seventeen, for he made for he has made him who knew him no sin to be the sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of god in christ so you and i once we believe god believe what jesus has done we have been made the righteousness of god in christ jesus we maintain this relationship with jesus christ to faith and we believe and we have been made righteous so if you've been made righteous what can you do to make yourself righteous you're already you know um Philippians 3 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith and so you and I can't work up this thing you can't earn righteousness you can't and that is a teaching a erroneous teaching and belief that people have in their system they can do works and become righteous there is no such thing become righteous as you believe god and this righteousness this life of faith is our breastplate it protects us from the enemy it protects us, uh, um, in, uh, the vital parts of our life and that's what that, that breastplate represents to protect this um, soldier in some of the major areas of him there's other vital parts within the body you know the face the, the neck and the throat and all those type of stuff but when it comes to the human body um the life of faith is what protects you and i so we maintain this righteousness as we are in our relationship with god with christ because it tells us in the scripture and so you and i cannot earn it in the sense where we're working for it and 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 um in that fashion we get it by our believing and confessing and once we believe the scripture says which i read to you guys before uh, um tells us that uh, we are righteous and we've been made the righteousness i don't know how else to put it to you in second corinthians five seventeen, for he for he have made who knew no sin jesus christ to be sin for us so jesus christ literally became sin uh, for on our behalf um, that we there was an exchange that happened on the cross is that he took our sins and we took on his righteousness that we might made the righteousness of god in christ jesus and so he understand this i want this is very important uh, because uh, can't work yourself into this, and uh, that er erroneous teaching out there that tells people that we can work ourselves into this is absolutely bogus. As we are seeing, the Word of God is saying differently, and the Word of God, as we mentioned, is truth. It is not fact; it is truth. So then, Jesus Christ, the truth is, Jesus Christ became sin. Sin. He became the embodiment of sin. He was it. That is the reason why the Father turned his, his turned away from him because he had look on sin and jesus yelled out ah father father why have thou forsaken me why because of this great exchange that took place right here god could not look onto his son what that is the very first time that god uh, the father turned his back from his son jesus christ in ever and we have a documentation of what happened and what caused it and this was the first time that Jesus experienced absolute serious loneliness, separation from God. Separation from God is sin. So he was separated from God. He became, he was made for he hath made him who knew no sin. God made him, made sin to come unto Jesus to be sin for you and I that we might be made the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God because we confess and believe. And it tells us in Philippians 3, 9, and he found in him not having mine own righteousness is of the law. Can't get righteousness by the, by the law, but that is through faith. Through faith is how we gain our white righteousness. Through faith of Christ, the righteousness is of God by faith. Romans 4, 5, 4, 3 states, Abraham believed God, and when he believed God, the Bible says that is righteous. And so you and I have to rethink and accept the truth versus fact. And the truth is you can't do nothing to gain it except for you to confess it. And you are, once you confess, it says if we confess 
uh, our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive of, uh, uh, us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So once we are cleansed from all unrighteousness, we are made, there's a transfer that takes place, that we have been made righteous. And once that transfer is in place, it is up to you and I to maintain that. Um, for us not to revert back to the flesh, let not sin have dominion over you. And so we have the power to let sin in to our life to corrupt us, as the scripture tells us, or we do not. And I choose not to let it corrupt me. I live a life of corruption and, and I made a decision to change my life and to be different. Um, and, uh, I am glad that I did it because God uh, requires me and I love my God and I want to be able to get to know him and I want to look like him. I want to behave like him. I want to think like him. I want to act like him. And so the scripture admonish us that uh, we are righteous and this righteousness we gain by faith and you don't get it any other way. And so I want to make sure that you understand this because um, once the enemy comes, but you understand that you're walking in faith and your breastplate, you have that breastplate, major organs uh, uh, as far as in your body are protected from the enemy and from any of his weapons that he has come against you. And so once he comes, because he's going to come, you have the truth and you are righteous. Um, there was an exchange that took with Jesus Christ with your sin and with his righteousness with my sin and with his righteousness there was an exchange that took us and i gained access to that um by by confessing and the bible tells us that i have been made the righteousness of god but now the righteousness of god apart from the law is manifested being witnessed by the prophet even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is none, no difference. So that's how you and I become righteous. It is not by works. There's no way. No room for that. That is erroneous. It is no way. You are not righteous by doing works. You forget it. You can't do it. The truth tells us different. Romans 3, 21, 22. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is manifest, being witnessed by the prophet. Even the righteousness of God this is how we get righteous and we are deemed righteous. We are getting the righteousness of God. This is God's righteousness that we're getting because we get it, which is Jesus Christ. He took my sin and he gave me his righteousness. And so this righteousness that is of um, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. The uh, Bible tells us that uh, Abraham believed God and it was accounted or credited unto him for righteousness. So um, I spent some, you know, I wanted to stay uh, uh, for you to understand this. And once you understand this, that there's nothing you can do except for believe. Your faith becomes very important because this is one of your weapons. Now he's talking here about your that righteousness once you've gained that by um by the exchange of uh, become born again. That was that time that you are righteous, guys, from there on. Now, what you do with your righteousness will dictate where you go. Because it says, let not sin have dominion over you. You, that exchange that was the place, you and I have, it is now our choice to walk in that. So when we choose to be sinful and live a life of sinfulness, the Bible says, don't let man be deceived. For what shall he, whatever he sow it, he will reap. And it tells us that God is not mocked. And so God is watching our decision. And so is the enemy watching our decision. And I've said to you, our decisions will dictate whose side we're on. We said, we saw the story with Job when God said to him, uh, when the enemy came before God, he says, behold, he is in your hand. And he got there. Because he was living a life of fearfulness. So you and I are righteous. We are righteous. We have been. Uh, ma we have made that exchange once we have confessed Jesus Christ. Now, if you are a backslider, as they say, I was one of them. I was one of the best, and I returned to God. God says, "Return to me, and I will, or, you know, uh, bless you and and heal you and all of these things." So He will cleanse our sins, and so. You return to him, and it is my hope 
I pray that you return to God and become sober. And he says that in first one nine, I believe this word, and so I believe it. And it says that if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So when I went out there, I corrupted myself. He cleansed me. He washed me with his blood. So now, because of my um, reconnection with him, I am. I have now clothed myself with the righteousness of God by faith. And so um, this was even the righteousness of God, which by faith of Jesus Christ. And it tells us, unto all, upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, no difference between a Jew and a Gentile when it comes to this thing. And the Bible tells us that Abraham believed God, and it was accredited to him for righteousness. So righteousness is right standing. The Bible tells you and I how to maintain our right standing with God. And you hear me say it every time when I end my teaching. The Bible says the just shall live by faith and we walk by faith, not by sight.